Hey, this is Nev Lapper from Snowboard Addiction. I'm here today with Tim, who is a brand new snowboarder. In fact, yeah. this is not set up. He's actually never snowboarded before in his life. Never. And what we're doing today is we're going to be looking at different types of boards, how to buy a board, what to look for, different shapes. Um, and Tim's going to be asking me a bunch of questions about how to get set up for the snowboard. Got a lot to ask. So. <laughs> Um, we're right now in the Circle, which is a snowboard shop in uh, Whistler, which is where we're based. Uh, it's one of the coolest shops in town. And I'm um, kind enough to let us uh, film a little tutorial here. Awesome. So, sweet. So, there's lots of different types of snowboards. And there's no perfect board for everything. But I'm going to give you as much knowledge as I can today on different shapes and stuff. Cool. First thing I want to kind of ask is, do you know what kind of snowboarding you want to get into? Is there something you've seen that you're like, I want to do that? Yeah, so... A bit of a mixture, I guess, kind of being a skateboarder most of my life, you know, park appeals a little bit. Days of big stuff is, is done. I'm not going to be throwing myself off massive, you know, I guess 20 foot. I don't know how big the jumps are, but, you know, some... Oh, you probably will be. Yeah, I'll be. Yeah, we'll be, getting you, we'll be getting you going off 20 foot jumps <laughs> some, after a while. But, uh, yes, you know, it's like messing around, some little 360s, maybe some grinds and stuff. Yeah. But then also more on the surfing side of things, having done a bit of surfing myself and spending a lot of time in that industry. Yeah. Um, just some drawing nice lines on powder days and okay. just doing some carves, getting some snow up, just cruisy down the mountain, nothing super fast and heavy power. But yeah, just a bit of kind of, I guess, yep. all rounder maybe. But, uh, but yeah, that's, okay. that's where I'm at. Cool. So um, with snowboarding, people who want to get into kind of freestyle, which it sounds like you do, it's nice to be able to get a board that you can both ride regular and switch. Do you know yeah. what stance you ride? Yeah, I ride regular. Regular, so, okay. Yeah. So, um, you know, because there's so many different tricks in snowboarding, like 180s and board slides and 540s where you're switching your stance up all the time. It's really nice to be able to ride in both directions. Cool. Now, the other thing that you already you talked about a while is, you talked about is kind of like, um, more like free riding, surfy feel, like slashes and stuff. That's also a sick area of snowboarding that everybody loves to do. Yeah. And the board types between these two are actually very different. So, it's hard to get a board that does everything. Mm. But I'm going to give you the different kind of design concepts and, uh, and show you what will work better for different ones. Perfect. Let's have a look at a couple of boards. Cool. So they have a, probably a couple hundred boards here. I just pulled a couple off the shelf here just to show you. I mean, you helped me pull them out. Tell me what you spot. Well, there's a big variety of shapes, you know, different, like some are symmetrical, some aren't. Some have the, where the bindings go further down. So I guess riding it in kind of one direction, like switch wouldn't work as good. Yeah. I mean, you've got ones like this one with a massive cutout kind of swallow fish tail, I guess. If that's what we'd call it in surfing. Yep. But yeah, there's a big variety between them. So these first two boards are very powder focused boards. Those are, you're only going to ride them in one direction. Yeah. You're not going to ride very well at all going switch. <laughs> but in saying that, that'd be a hell of a lot of fun on a really deep power day. Yeah. But it's not the kind of board you want to get for all the mountain. Yeah. Okay, so this one here, huge swallowtail. It's a big nose, big wide board up here. It's gonna be amazing in power. It's gonna sink under the back foot. Same thing with this one. This is also a power board. You'll see the size of the nose is a lot bigger than the size of the tail, which means it's designed to float through the snow, float on kind of top of the snow. Oh, yeah. The stance is set back towards the back foot more, so you're always riding it in one direction. Mm. I mean, if you, if you put it on the ground, you'll see that the back doesn't really raise up very much. So it's, it's not, pretty flat, yeah. it's not gonna, yeah. It's not gonna be a good one to ride switch on, <laughs> okay? Whereas some of these other boards that I pulled out here are just more kind of uh, your all mountain freestyle type boards, which honestly is probably more like what you're actually gonna go for. Yeah. So um, you'll see here, I mean, I'll pull this one out because this here is a very traditional shaped snowboard with a round nose and a round tail. Yeah. Now sometimes you'll see other boards that have a little bit more kind of maybe squared off or shaped nose. Not a huge difference in that. I was going to say, does it make much? Because you're not really riding on your nose or your no. tail unless you, like, I don't know what the term for it is, maybe like, is it buttering or something? I don't know. Yeah, buttering but, you're definitely riding up on the yeah. nose. Um, but when you see these different shapes, most of it is marketing. Okay. Um, you can, different things look cool or appeal to different people. Um, so you'll see here, this one here, it has much more of an aggressive nose. Again, it's not going to make a huge difference to how it rides. Got you. Um, but 
it's good. It's cool to have a board that you like to look at. Yeah, All I right. guess cool. aesthetics wise. Have you spotted the two differences between the mounting systems? Yes, yeah, so I noticed that this one, or most of them have this, what I guess classic bolt system. Yep. But this board has what looks like a groove or a track or something. Yeah. So this type of, um, when you see these inserts, this is called a four by four or a four hole mounting system. Now that is the typical snowboard mounting system that's on almost every snowboard company's board. If you ever see this channel, this is called the EST channel and it's a system designed by Burden and you'll usually only find it on Burden boards. Okay. There's a couple of other companies that also have it too, yeah. but predominantly only on Burden boards. Okay. The thing you need to know about that is that if you buy a Burden channel board, you want to buy Burden channel bindings to go with that board. Okay. And if you buy a four hole mounting system board, you want to buy the normal four hole mounting system bindings to go with it. Cool. And does it make much of a difference in terms of riding and, and well, yeah, riding, does it, does it affect you? Is it? So it doesn't make a huge difference to your riding. The main difference is that uh, when a four hole mounting system, you've got um, four bolts per binding holding your foot on. And on a burden channel system, you only have two bolts per binding holding the, holding the um, board to the binding. Now the difference what happens with that is that with the channel, because there's only two bolts, it's really easy to adjust. You can make a lot of different stance options and you can make it quite quickly. Yeah. Whereas here, you have to undo four screws. It's a little bit more work. It takes a little bit more time. But the advantage of that is a lot of people will argue that having four bolts per foot is much stronger of a mounting system. Got you. Holding, the, holding your actual binding to the board or your boot to the board. Yeah. Okay, so that's your main differences. Cool. Functionality, ease of, ease of, uh, of changing. Yeah. And strength. Cool. Cool? Yeah, perfect. Awesome. So, um, what we want to get into now is kind of, um, well, these four boards here are more of your typical all mountain riding boards. And like, I didn't, we've got a lot of different boards we can choose from. If you aim the camera down here, you can see John in the background. Support Chris Rasman. John, okay, yeah, this, this guy, <laughs> pull this in. This is a LibTech snowboard. And Chris Rasman is a local pro from Whistler. Um, really cool dude. Wicked rider, and he's got a pro model now with LibTech. Well deserved. I, one of my employees, shout out to Jesse, is actually riding that board. I think he bought it from here. Did he? Yeah, last year. An, oh, another guy bought one. That yeah. Bought it. Yeah, one of my employees got it. Yeah, anyway, so amazing. pull this over. This is another example of you see how it's got a bit of a funky nose going on? Not going to make a huge difference to the riding. Mm. It's just kind of a different look. Aesthetic, yeah. yeah. But this is a cool board. So, what I want to show you is, um, of these boards, because you're new to snowboarding, you want to try out some freestyle, mm. you probably want to go with something you can ride both regular and switch. Yeah, okay? for sure. So one of the most important things with choosing a snowboard is coming down to what size board we should get. How much do you weigh? Uh, around the 82 kilos. Okay, and how so. tall are you? Six foot. Six foot? Yeah. Six foot, 82 kilograms. Okay, to give you a bit of a reference, I'm 5'9", so 3 inches shorter than you, and 70 kilograms, so 10, kilogram, 10 to 12 kilograms lighter than you. Yeah. And what I generally ride, my all-mounted freestyle board, is usually a 154. Cool. 153, 154, 155. Yeah. But 154 is what I'm riding. Cool. So, do you think you'd be on a bigger board or a smaller board than me? I'm going to guess bigger. Yes, you would be on a bigger board than me. So, if I was to chuck out a ballpark number, I would say you're probably looking for somewhere around 158. 158, 159, 160 is what you're looking for. Yeah. Now, the shorter you go, the more playful a board's going to be. Okay. The longer you go, the more it's going to usually have a little bit more stiff, a little bit more stability to it. Yeah. Okay. So if you were like charging, just want to ride fast, weren't too worried about freestyle, I would say go a little bit longer. Yeah. If you want to get more into freestyle, you want a little bit more playful, I would go that little bit shorter. Yeah, I think yeah. The, the playful spectrum is more where I'm at yep. than the go really fast and just straight down kind of thing. So, Yeah, so total ballpark, I would say something around a 157, 158 is going to be good. 158, 159. So let's pick a board like that. Um, I think this one was a 159. Okay, this is a 159. Cool. So if we put this up against you just for a reference, you'll see that the 159 is coming up to just about your chin here, just under your chin, a yeah. couple centimeters. And if we grab a 155, 155 is at about my chin, and I'm usually riding about a 154. Cool. So 
Um, you probably don't want to get anything up above your chin. Yeah. Because it's just going to get a little bit long unless you are riding deep powder. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. Sometimes on the back of boards, it will give you a weight and height recommendation. So check out the back of the new boards and, and see what it says. Does that one have a weight and height recommendation? It uh, doesn't look like it. It's just more about the, about the board itself and its specs. So I know that this capital one does have a weight recommendation because I spotted it just before. So this is a 152, so it's a, short, a board that's too short for you. Yeah. And if you see the 152 here, it gives a weight recommendation of 50 to 68 kilograms. Okay. So you're... 80 to 80, 80, 82 ish. Yep. So have a check out the back of the boards and see if you can do that. Um, but if you, don't, if you can't find that, think about this. Somewhere around your chin or a couple of neck to chin, it's going to be a right height, yeah. and if you go shorter, it's going to be more playful. If you're going to go long, it's going to be a bit more aggressive, a bit more stiff. Cool. Makes sense? Yeah, definitely. Okay, cool. What size are your feet? The feet, uh, UK, well, eight and a half UK, so about a buy size UK nine shoes. So that's like in it's European, it's 43. That's about, I think that's 10 I US. I think it's 10 US, yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. So size 10 US is right on that borderline where if you had a size 11 or 12 US foot, you'd want to get a wide board. Yeah. Now, when I say a wide board, that means that the board is actually made wider on purpose for people with big feet. Got you. With your size feet, you're going to be in the perfect size to not need a wide board. Cool. Okay? Yeah. That's, that's important to look for because sometimes boards will be wide. And if you get a wide board and you don't need it, it's going to take more effort to ride. Yeah, I've noticed that the difference in widths and stuff, and I did wonder how that would affect riding and performance and yeah. stuff. So. Now, to give you um, sizing on snowboards, that you can hold that, is that most, the vast majority of, of adult male snowboards are gonna be somewhere from 150 up to 160. The vast majority are gonna fall in that range, yeah. okay? Now, the smaller boards are a little bit lighter, a bit softer, um, um, they are a little bit thinner, and as you get bigger, they get that little bit wider, that little bit stiffer to hold the bigger, bigger weight and yeah. bigger height and bigger mass of people. Got you. Okay? So because you're six foot, 80, 80 kilograms, you're gonna be at that slightly bigger range, riding something like a 150, 157, 158. Cool. Cool? Yeah, sounds good. Awesome, okay. Now we're gonna get into some different types of shapes. Okay? Yeah. Because there's lots of shapes to snowboards. You say this one's already got some kind of weird. Oh, see, when, you, when I say shape, you're talking, you're talking about this, I'm talking about a different type of shape. All oh, right, there we go. But just, just to, to, to work on that, the, the shapes of the nose and tails don't matter too much. Okay. It's more of a marketing play. Yeah. But what does matter is what's called the bend of the board. Okay, so like a rocker on a surfboard and stuff like this. Correct. Cool. It's the same kind of name, actually. Yeah. So in, in snowboarding, it's called rocker, camber, yeah. or a combination. Okay. It's basically what it comes down to. Cool. So do you know what camber means? Uh, no, is it like concave on a skateboard? Because on a con skateboard, obviously you have the concave is how deep the, the yep. bend in the board is. Is it similar to that or? I'll show you what it is. So this board here is a camber board. Now a camber board, basically, this is what camber is. It's like, it's the shape like that. Okay. So if you push this, see how it's got, I mean, it even look better if I put it on the concrete because the concrete's flatter. But can you see that? Yeah, it's got some give underneath it. Yeah. So this board is shaped like that. Uh, okay. That's the camber of the board, okay? That's why it springs back. Um, now, if it was a reverse camber, this would be flat and it would kind of almost shape like a banana. Does that make Got sense? It. Yeah. There's not too many boards these days that are actually um, uh, full reverse camber boards anymore. Yeah. Um, and uh, let, me give you the, let, me, let me give you kind of the quick difference between rocker camber and combination rocker which is like a banana mm -hmm. is generally best for beginners yeah or people who aren't or like brand new to snowboarding but in saying that i know you've done surfing and skateboarding and stuff so i don't want you to go out and buy a rocker board okay it, that's for people who are going to be like on the bunny slope yeah right um camber is generally um more aggressive gives you better pop gives you better response but you have to put a little bit more work in to ride a camber board. Okay. And a combination camber, which is basically a combination of, of regular camber and reverse camber, yeah. is kind of the middle ground. Interesting. Okay. 
So a lot of intermediate riders out there these days are riding combination camber boards. Yeah. Whereas a lot of like the high end riders, like the people in the X Games and the Olympics, are riding camber boards. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. Most of your boards you're going to find are either going to be camber or combination camber. Yeah. What would uh, a combination camber look like? Does it kind of go from one to the other? I'm going to show you right now. Cool. So this is what you want to look at. So if I take this board right now and I look down the edge of the board, I want you, I want you to um, put your eye down here and I want you to see if you can see the shape of the board. Yeah, it can. Yeah. You see it? Yeah, it kind like of that? bows out this way, then drops down, then bows out again. Yep. Yeah. So what I'm looking at is, yeah, that bow out of the board. I'm going to get another one that even shows it better and then I'll show it to the camera. Okay, so camera versus combination camber. This board's the Capita DOA. And um, on the back of the sticker, it quite often tells you what the what the camber of the board is. Yeah. So you'll see on this one here, the vast majority of this board is a positive camber, which is regular camber. Mm -hmm. But it also is saying it has a zero camber here and a zero camber here. So it's just flat. Yeah, a little bit yeah. of little bit of flat on the nose and the tail, and then a positive camber. So if I put this on the ground, you see that the yeah. vast majority of this board is a regular camber board. Yeah. Okay. So there's lots of different combinations. It has a little combination. This one here, this is the LibTech T-Raz, and um, it has kind of a combination of different cambers to it. So if we find the sticker, so on the sticker here, you'll see here how it's got rocker in the middle, camber over each foot. And then if you have a look down the edge, actually it's gonna be easier if I put it on the ground. Okay. See how it's different than this one? Yeah. This one springs back, this one doesn't. It actually has a little bit of camber on each foot with a rocker in the middle. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. So that's a very typical example of a, a board that is a combination of the two cambers. Got you. Right? Now, a lot of intermediate riders are riding um, these boards that have combination cambers. In fact, that's probably going to be something that's going to be good for you. Yeah. Because you've done surfing and skateboarding, you're going to pick up snowboarding pretty quick. I hope so. <laughs> so I would say somehow this is going to be really good. Yeah. And then a couple of years down the road, as you become a really good snowboarder, you may want to try out some regular camber boards yeah. um, to see how that feels. Yeah. Cool. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Because the main difference is this is going to be a little bit more forgiving. That's going to be more aggressive. It's going to be, come on, come on. Can I interrupt? Yeah, come on through. Yeah. 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 So, um, the main difference is going to be that a regular camera board is usually stiffer, yeah. gives a little bit more grip, a little bit more pop, have to ride it a little bit more aggressive, whereas these combination boards, a bit more forgiving. Cool. Makes sense? Yeah, definitely. So for most intermediate riders, the combination camber is actually pretty good. Whereas myself, I actually ride regular camber. Yeah. Because I want that extra aggressiveness, I want that stiffness, I want that pop. Yeah. Makes sense? Sweet. 100%. So, we're starting to get a bit of an idea now yeah. on a board. We know the rough size range you're looking for. We know the rough board shape, something that's going to be both, you can ride it both regular and switch. Yeah. And we know kind of um, uh, a bend, which is one of these combination camera boards. Going to be good yeah. So now we can start looking for real boards. Let's get into it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So what we're doing now is we're sifting through some boards, looking for stuff 58, 59 kind of range, and then we're going to talk about them. So. Got a 158 here. Yeah, grab that out. This one's a 159. So we went through and just picked out a bunch of boards here that kind of like in your size range. Yep. And let's talk about them. So this is a Nitro, Brian Austin. What do you, what do you recognize about this board? It looks like a powder board. It is a powder board. Because the bindings are slightly further back. You're gonna be on the tail more. The Correct. nose is longer or bigger yep. than the tail. What size so is that one? I think it is 159 when I pulled, I think this one. Yeah. So to find the size of the boards, you're either going to look, um, you're going to look like uh, on the board, sometimes on the edge. So this one here is on the edge, 159. So that's about the right size for you, except this is a power board and we yeah. want to get more of a- We don't want that. Yeah. yeah so put cool. that one to the side. This one here, what size is that one? I think this was a 158. Or 57. There 157. Yep. So that's one meter, 57 centimeters. Yeah. And um, that one there is on the smaller side of what we're looking for you. Okay. But this could be something that you that you yeah. could ride. What's the um, what's the bend on that one? 
looks like it's on the back. It's a, so it's positive camber yep, with so a bit of reverse camber. camber. So it's a, a combination. Yep, a but it's bit. more. This one's more of a. It's got a full positive camber through there. Got you. So possible. A maybe. Possible. We'll put that in the maybe part. Yep. Put that in the maybe part. Okay, this one we looked at before. Yeah. It was the LibTech um, T Raz, and uh, was it 159? combination so. camber yeah one other thing i noticed when i was picking out some boards and looking that the edges can vary in like thickness and also the profile like this one for example i see it has kind of like a wave Correct. shape to it does that make much of a difference or is it again just an aesthetic thing or so if you look here with the camera you can kind of see that the edge of the libtech boards waves on the way down and what's that that's called magnet traction so that's a technology that um, LibTech uses on their boards. Yeah. And it's designed to be able to give you better grip and ice. Got you. Okay. So some LibTechs have it and GNU boards have it, but other boards don't have that technology. Cool. Some other companies have uh, their variation of it, yeah. frostbite edges. Um, not essential. Got you. It's um, just something that's unique to these boards. Yeah, cool. Okay. Whereas if you look at most traditional boards, like let's just have a look at that. This is a burden, it's called a one hitter and it's, basically just got a consistent edge the whole way down. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So not a crazy, you don't need to worry about it too Ooh, much. Grab that. Okay. So that LibTech board is something that we could definitely consider for you. So put that on the consider pile. Make this new pile. This one here is a Burden one hitter and that's a, a 60, a 160. Yeah. So just putting that up against you there. Kind of the 160 almost comes up to your chin. Slight more of a powder focus. Yeah. So I would say maybe not. Right maybe now. not. Cool. If you just want to ride power more, get something like that. Yeah. Because you could still ride that over the whole mountain. This one here is the um, Capita Kazu Pro. I want you to feel how stiff this one is. So when I say feel it, hold the top and then try to bend it, bend the bottom. It's pretty feels pretty rigid, but I don't really know what to go by in terms yeah, of so how. Do this. I want you to feel that stiffness. Okay, and yeah. I want you to grab this lip tech and do the exact same. Do the same thing. Feel the difference? Yeah, definitely. Okay, so softer, stiffer. Now, what you're going to find is a stiffer is going to take more energy to ride. It's going to give you good stability at super high speeds and going to be off good off big jumps and stuff yeah. like that. But this is going to be more forgiving, more playful. Cool. Makes sense? Yeah. So because you're learning, better to go for something more playful, playful and softer. Yeah. Now, the reason this is so stiff is it's a regular camber board. And Kazu is a pro rider. This is his pro board. Got you. Um, and uh, he's a very aggressive rider. <laughs> yeah. So I'd say that was too aggressive for you. Cool. This one here is a, a Yes board, which is a local company up here. And... Um, when you get into the back of the boards, you can kind of read about what the board is. Mm -hmm. And again, this one is called Pick Your Line. So it's, if you read about it, it's again more of a, a bit more of a powder focus board. Yeah, I can see kind of the shape. It looks like it's slightly wider on the nose, definitely. And Correct. A bit wider on the nose, a little bit bigger nose and tail. Yeah. So I'll put that on the no part for now. These are sick boards, but... Not what I'm after. Yeah. What do we got here? Quan. This is a Dinosaurs Will Die, 158. Right in the right size range. Very traditional board, very traditional freestyle board. It's a regular camber. It's called Action Cam. Feel the stiffness of it. Pretty forgiving. Yeah, it's kind of in between those other two, right? Yeah. Yeah. So this is maybe, but the combination camber might suit your riding style better. Cool. This one here is another Dinosaurs Will Die, Mate. I'm looking on the back of, this, of the boards because I'm kind of reading about, um, about what it is. So this has a low rider camber, which looks to me like it's almost like a reverse camber, according to this. What's the low rider camber, John? They say they call it like micro camber, so it's just less camber. So yeah. it's like, I don't know the exact dimensions on it, but it's like maybe 2.5 millimeters camber, I think. Yeah. So the idea is that it's going to ride like a well broken in camber board. So it's still going to be poppy and carb really nice, yeah. but you're not having to fight it as much. Okay. 
So some of these boards here are gonna be some of the better ones for you to choose from. Dinosaurs Will Die, Libtech, t raz this Capita one, and then this Yes Unink. And these are like four, four kind of boards that would be the right kind of range for your size and the right kind of board for your ability level. And then you gotta choose what graphic you like. Because <laughs> graphics are always important too, you know, you might as well like what you're looking for. Yeah, for sure. Like what you're writing. So, is it something you kind of like are leaning to? Quite like the Capita. Yeah? Quite like monochrome or neutral tones, nothing too big graphics, like this is a bit, yeah. bit crazy. Yeah, you're more into that kind of style? Yeah, more of a like, Minimalist, I guess. Yep. All right. So, have we, what other questions do you have regarding boards? I mean, does it make, obviously you're gonna have to pick bindings to go with the board. Yep. And does that, I guess that's a whole nother ball game is what bindings to get to go with the board. Does it make a difference? Certain bindings will be better with certain types of board and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, but as a whole, with the, in terms of the board, I think, <coughs> My only other question, what are snowboards made of? Wood. Wood? Wood right. and fiberglass. Okay. Because yeah, I see like metal. Metal, metal edges and I was like, oh, I wonder yeah. what's actually inside this thing. I haven't, yeah. you know, didn't well, really know. Let's talk about that. As uh, Tim's asking about what is an actual snowboard made of, um, it's basically wood, fiberglass and metal. So the inside of the board is a wood core. Yeah. And that's what gives it its bend and kind of bend and pop back. Yeah because uh, wood bends and wants to pop back to its normal yep. shape. And then you've got layers of, um, on the bottom here, you have a base material uh, called PTEX. Mm -hmm. And then in between the wood and the PTEX, you have fiberglass. And then on the top sheet, you have fiberglass underneath the top sheet. It's basically just got the graphic on it. Yep. You've got fiberglass in between the top sheet and the wood. Yep. And then you've got metal edges to help grip in the snow and metal inserts to attach to the bindings. Bindings to. Cool. Yeah. Did not know that. Okay, so we're here with Tim, and we've been looking at different board shapes, board designs, that kind of stuff. And we've come up with a few conclusions. Yeah. One, we know Tim's size, 82 kilograms, six foot tall. Spot so on. we've come up with a rough size, somewhere around around 58, 59. Okay? We've talked about the kind of riding you want to do. You want to get into some freestyle, learn some park stuff, and also have a good time riding the mountain. So you want to get a board where you can ride both regular and switch um, and all mounts and freestyle board. And third, we talked about the shapes like camber, reverse camber. And because you're a beginner and learning to snowboard, you want to go with something a little bit softer. A bit Soft more forgiving. Help me out a little forgiving. bit. Yeah. And that generally means um, if you pick up a board and you flex it and it feels real stiff, don't go with that. Go oh, with yeah. something softer. Generally a combination of camber and reverse camber combined together mm -hmm. is going to work well for you. Perfect. Makes sense? Yeah, definitely. Then you gotta go and look at all different kind of graphics, pick something you like, pick Maybe a like brand a you like. Kid in a candy shop yeah. in all these stores. There's but, uh, lots of lots of boards to look through, um, but you're probably gonna be riding this board for a couple of years. So. Yeah, definitely investment. Like. So I guess next steps, boots and bindings. Correct. I have no idea all right. what I need. So all right. Okay, so have you ever put a pair of snowboard boots on before? Never. Okay. No. So this the most important thing with boots is to find something that's comfortable. Okay. Comfortable, supportive. Yeah. So the, my highest recommendation, if you're going to try, if you're going to looking for a pair of snowboard boots on, is go to the shop and try on every single pair. <laughs> okay. What size is your foot? Uh, I guess US 10. I'm a UK 9. US 10. Yeah. Okay. So go in and try out the US 10, but then also try out the 9.5 and try out the 10.5 and see what feels better for you. Yeah. You want a really snug fit, but you want it to be comfortable. Yeah. Shouldn't be any weird pressure points or anything. Got you. Okay. Now, as you get really good at snowboarding, um, most high level snowboarders want a very kind of supportive boot. And when I say supportive, it generally slightly more on the stiff side. Because you're learning, it's not so important. Cool. You're going to be in these boots for sometimes six, seven hours if you're doing a full day. Yeah. You want to be as comfortable as possible. For sure. Got it? Yeah. So trying on lots of boots. Um, different lacing systems. This is a very traditional lacing system here. Whereas this, this one here is called the BOA. Okay, now the BOA, it's, um, it's basically just a flash lacing system where you push it on and twist it, okay. and it tightens up for you. I ride BOAs, um, it doesn't matter, you don't need to ride BOAs. Is it personal preference or is it's it personal speed? Preference. Yeah. Speed, speed, personal preference. Got you. Yeah. 
Um, some people still like traditional laces. I guess I'm kind of lazy, so I like the uh, the boa laces. Yeah, perfect. Right? So comfort, Got support. You. And what would you, when you're wearing a snowball boot, yep. do you just wear normal fix, like walking boot socks, kind of anything like that? or Snowboard socks. Snowboard socks. You know, any socks are going to be fine. Yeah. But if you want to buy nice snowboard socks, they provide a little bit more support, good warmth. They're normally made of like good materials like wool, yeah. help you keep your feet warmer. Perfect. Um, and then um, when you do your boot, your, your um, foot up yeah. in the boot, you shouldn't be able to lift any part of it, like you shouldn't be able to lift your, your heel. It should be fully wedged in. Correct. Got you. If you can lift your heel, that's not a good fitting boot. Got you. Make sense? Yeah, 100%. Your, your toes shouldn't be scrunched up on the end. It should be nice and supportive and, and like feel um, like that when you make a movement with your foot, that's going to transition the whole to the board. The boots get moving as well. Does that make you. sense? Okay. It's all about trying on a bunch of pairs, walking around in the shop. <laughs> Don't worry about putting both pairs on and walking around and feel it out. Got you. Cool? Yeah. Okay, bindings. So, boots are more important. Mm -hmm. Get the comfiest boot that you can find because you're learning, you're going to be spending a lot of time in it. Yeah. When it comes to bindings, you just have to make sure that the binding fits the boot you have. Got you. So, most bindings come in three sizes, small, medium, large. Some companies might do like a small, medium and a medium, large, right? Mm -hmm. You want to, ideally, if you've already picked your board and you've already got your boots, try bindings out on the board, you know? You can even screw them on and see how your boots fit into those bindings, okay? Yep. Because this is this is your connector between yourself and the board. And so the more optimal the fit, the better you're gonna be able to transfer that into your snowboarding. Got oh, yeah. Make sense? Yep. So, um, if you're with your size foot, which is like a 10 US, yep. you're most likely gonna ride a medium binding. Cool. So if I was to grab, this here is just a pair of union bindings. And uh, see on the bottom here, it's a Contact Pro Binding Black M. So that's a medium binding. Mm -hmm. So once you've picked your boots, you can fit that into your, um, into your boot and see how it feels. Now, bindings are very adjustable. So you'll see here how it's got holes and screws. Mm -hmm. So you can adjust the, uh, the toe strap and the heel strap so that like if, if I was to put my foot into this right now, Now, a snowboard boot's much bigger than a shoe, but basically, once you've got it on, you almost want it to be pulling directly down on the boot in a very central way. So it shouldn't be pulling like from one side or the other. Yeah. Or sometimes if the binding's too big, you like get to the bottom and you can't tighten it anymore, but it's not tight. Mm. That would be that would mean the binding's too big for you. Cool. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's all about fit. Does it fit the boots well? And um, and most of the bindings are very adjustable. So you're probably going to be on a medium. Cool. Make sense? Definitely. Medium. Okay. If you have a very large foot, you're going to large binding. If you have a very small foot, small binding. Yeah. If you have a kid's foot, kid's bindings. <laughs> okay. The only other thing to watch out for bindings is um, there's two main mounting systems. We talked about it when we did boards. Ah, uh, yeah. The Burton mounting system versus the regular four pin, is it, or four hole? Correct. So this is the four, four by four mounting system. Yeah. And most binding companies have that four by four mounting system where it comes with a disc and you'll have four screws. And then the other one, obviously, is the burden channel system. If you flick behind you there, you'll see that the burden channel. If you're going to buy a burden channel board, get the burden channel EST bindings. Cool. And what that'll look like is that it'll have two screws, which will be on the outside of the bindings. So it won't have that disc. Mm. Make sense? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So that's bindings. Pretty simple. Um, the more you pay, the better binding you're going to get. Yeah. Um, the cheaper bindings, there's nothing wrong with the cheap bindings. It's just better materials and um, we'll better last technology. Last longer durability. Yeah. Does, it, uh, does a binding affect riding style and performance much? Or is it just literally to lock your foot into a board? Lock your foot into your board, but um, there is, uh, there's different bindings for different things. Now, the good thing is is that most, most of snowboarding is pretty standard these days. Yeah. So freestyle, like you'll see most of these bindings here are like an all mountain freestyle binding between these different companies. So it really comes down to how much you want to pay, what you like the look of. Cool. So I'd say this one here is $289 Canadian. That's probably a good mid-range freestyle binding. It's not like the super expensive stuff, but it's not the super cheap stuff. Yeah. Makes sense? Any questions on bindings? No, I think it's, are they all universal in terms of how you enter the binding so you just strap off put your foot in 
strap on. Yep. Cool. Mostly. There's a couple of other companies that do some different things. Okay. Um, there's like, there's uh, one company called Flow where you have like a rear entry. It's not very common anymore. Mm. Vast majority are like this. You have the toe strap and the ankle strap. Cool. Vast majority. Yeah. Burden has a new one called um, Step On, where it's like a step in binding system. I don't know if you've seen that. No, I haven't. I mean, it's not co not super common yet. This is what almost 90 plus percent of snowboarders are going with. Yeah, cool. Standard two strap. Sounds good. Cool. I mean, let's have a look at a couple. So, like, this is the same company, obviously a much funkier color scheme. <laughs> yeah, um, quite bold. Feel the difference between the straps there, like the, the ankle strap. Yeah, feel that one's that one. pretty thin. That one's super padded, feels yeah. a bit more rigid as well. Yeah, so it's more of a supportive uh, ankle strap. And so that binding there is a more expensive binding. Mm. It's not that, it's only 40 bucks more, 329. Cool. So let's have a look at a couple other ones while we're here. This here is called Now, which is a local company. Cool. Made by a, an old, um, an ex-pro snowboarder who lives in the Whistler area. Nice. This has a different technology. It's got a, a pivot point in the middle of the binding. And it, it's almost like, um, you know how skateboarding trucks? Yeah, you can kind of to lean it. towards yeah. your heel edge, your toe edge. This has a slight bit of pivot in the binding. Okay. That um, gives you more of that surfy, skatey feel. Nice. Now, this again, the entry is, is the same. Yeah. Ankle strap, toe strap, very similar. Um, um, but it's just another. So would, for myself, coming from a skateboarding and a bit of surfing background, is something like this, would it be recommended for someone who's used to turning kind of on a trucks or on a surfboard? Or is it more for once you're at a certain level and you want that extra bit of play? I think at your level of snowboarding, you won't be able to tell the difference. Yeah. Because you're brand new to it. Exactly. So it's kind of more of a play that this is the technology this company's using. It's like, you know, on that LibTech board, how it had that wavy edge. Yeah. And it, that's designed to give you better grip in the ice. But it's something that someone like myself would definitely not notice Correct. any difference of. And some boards have it, some boards don't. It's kind of like some bindings have this, cool. some bindings don't. Yeah. Um, you know, the best thing you can do is if you're ever at like a demo. Yeah. So up at Whistler, we have demo days a couple of times a year and you can try this kind of stuff out. Then you can go up and try it for free. Nice. And see, oh, do I like it or do I not like it? Yeah. But right now it's kind of to make a difference. I like yeah. this company. That's cool. Yeah, I'll do yeah. it. I mean, I like supporting local companies, so yeah. that's always cool. So yeah. this shop has lots of cool local brands like Yes, Now, Dinosaurs Will Die. These yeah. are all pretty good, cool local good to brands. Know. So yeah. One other question is the height of yep. the support on the back, yep. which will probably come at the back of your leg. Does that make much of a difference? Because I can see, is this just because of the size or is that something specific to the binding itself? Yeah, good question. So if you look at the back of these bindings, you can see that the green one has a much larger high back than this kind of bluey gray one. That green one's gonna, um, that is gonna give you more support on your boot. So it's gonna give you more support there. Um, personally, I like having that support. Yeah. Some people don't. Um, now, to give you an example, some people who ride a lot of rails don't like to have that big support on the back because mm. they like to be able to have more movement there. Um, whereas I find I like that support. It helps with uh, getting your heel edge, uh, turning, um, just getting support back there. At your level of riding, you probably won't notice the difference either way. Again, yeah, cool. So, yeah. Nice. All good? Yeah. All right, so there we've talked about um, bindings, boots, boards. Everything. Obviously, obviously boards, you have the most variables of different things you want to consider. Yeah. Boots, get something super comfy that you're into. And bindings, get something that fits your boots well. Perfect. Does that make sense? Yeah, I feel like I'm all set up, ready to do some shopping. So now so. the shopping begins. Yeah, definitely. Sweet. Any last questions? No, I think that's it. I just look forward to taking this knowledge and finding something to get me going. Right Should on. Should be good. Sweet. Thanks, Cheers, Nev. Nev. Thank you very much. This is Nev Lapwood from Snowboard Addiction. Our goal is to improve your riding.